Have you ever read a book and thought, I've seen this character before? Well, today we are actually going to be reimagining tropes. How to refresh familiar characters in your writing. Uh, why is that why, why is that important, Thomas? Well, <clears throat> you know, uh, character tropes are crucial because it helps you tap into reader expectations while avoiding cliches. Playing with these archetypes can enrich your story with layered, recognizable characters that still feel original. So presenting one idea creates the biases that the readers are expecting, and then you kind of play with those biases, and now it's a refresh, refreshing experience. But ultimately, what are character tropes? Well, character tropes are basically reoccurring themes or motifs in literature, often portraying familiar character types like the reluctant hero or the wise mentor. Uh, they provide a foundation that can be creatively built upon. Now, before we go into the real-time walkthrough, I like to give some uh, helpful tips that you can think about while we do it. So let's uh, let's jump on it. Uno. Uh, why character tropes are tropes? Well, the short of it, tropes are patterns that readers recognize and enjoy. For instance, the chosen one resonates with readers because of its universal appeal to destiny and adventure. They provide a familiar shorthand that allows readers to quickly establish characters and their roles in the narrative. What's the long of it? Well, Tropes have this really wonderful ability to uh, create a sense of familiarity uh, that can ultimately comfort the readers because they uh, it's sort of like watching a show from beginning to end that you've already watched three or four times because you have a comfortable feeling about it. You feel safe in it and you could explore the emotions and it almost becomes a new experience because you are familiar with it uh, and you get to see all the nuances. However, uh, you know, the, the chosen one taps into those universal things of destinies and heroes. Uh, and that's why it usually has a broad uh, appeal to audiences. You know, however, using tropes allows writers to utilize established narrative shortcuts that can help expedite character development and plot progression without spending too much time on exposition you know and in reality tropes allow writers to establish characters and their motivations quickly well what do you mean well a rebellious teenager instantly cues readers into a certain set of behaviors and potential conflicts uh i uh i don't really like to be a rebellious teenager trope but anyway uh, I put it there uh, because that's a very familiar one, especially because uh, kids in every story is basically written like, you know, they hate their parents or something. Anyway, framework for development. Uh, you know, the thing of it, uh, when it comes to character tropes and why they are tropes, they provide a starting framework for which characters can start their journey, giving the audience a baseline expectation. Uh, for example... If I say that a character is a doctor, you already put on to that character all the things you know and understand. So it's the same thing with tropes. Dos. How character tropes could affect the narrative uh, poorly. The short of it, if used uncritically, tropes can lead to predictability. Making characters feel like cliches instead of distinct personalities. Some tropes can Reinforce harmful stereotypes. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Let me reread that. Some tropes can reinforce harmful stereotypes if not handled with nuance, reducing characters to simplistic roles instead of giving them depth. Before I go further, if you've watched my other videos, I'm sure you heard me say that you start with the internal truth before the external truth. Tropes are external truths. For example, the rebellious teenager, uh, the reluctant hero, uh, the wise mentor. Those are external. There's no real depth or nuance to that concept. This is the wise old mentor. There's nothing emotionally interesting about that. That's just what they do. But the why they do it and who they are and the intricacies and the nuances of that character is really what turns something into a beautiful examination of the human experience. Uh, and that's why some tropes can become harmful through those stereotypes. Okay. Um, all right. But what's the long of it? 
When tropes are used unironically or repeated too often, they lead to predictability and formulaic stories. Readers can anticipate exactly what will happen, dismissing suspense and emotional impact. Uh, it also leads to characters that strictly adhere to their trope and can feel one-dimensional and lack the depth required to hold the reader's interests, becoming ultimately flat characters. It also simplifies their roles. You know, tropes can fall into those stereotypes that reduce characters to simplistic roles like the damsel in distress or the brutish warrior. Uh, this limits their potential for growth and individuality. That's why in Shrek, we love the princess. She is not a damsel in distress. Okay. Okay. She's great. She's fantastic. Fantastic. Also, some tropes can reinforce harmful stereotypes if the nuanced uh, is way out of proportion. For instance, a mystical native trope can uh, perpetuate re uh, reductive cultural depictions. Okay. Good. Thrace. Approaching character tropes with a fresh perspective. The short of it, flip the trope. That's all I'm saying. If you flip the trope on its head or blend it with another, for instance, what if your reluctant hero starts out trying to run from their responsibilities but ends up wholeheartedly embracing their role in a surprising way? Ah, place the trope in an unexpected setting or give it an unconventional backstory. For example, a wise mentor could be Young and inexperienced, but driven by a deep passion for helping others. All right. But what's the long of it, Tom? Well, let me tell you. You got to change how the trope traditionally functions to surprise the reader. All right. But more importantly, combining different tropes to create a fresh character uh, will help you evolve the trope to something else. For example, a wise mentor could also be an anti-hero, adding unpredictability to their role as a guide. Mm -hmm. Or a wise mentor could be an anti-hero who is actually a damsel in distress, uh, but they actually end up saving the other person uh, in a different way, emotionally, uh, spiritually. Okay, something. Uh, place the trope in a new setting that challenges expectations. The reluctant hero could be a young po political reluctant to fight corruption within their own government rather than a traditional fantasy setting. Mm -hmm. Also, more importantly, give a character a backstory that adds dimension to the trope. A wise mentor could be a young inexperienced, but driven by their passion for helping others. Right now we're kind of diving deeper into the internal. They, they have a passion for helping others, but why do they have their passion for helping others? They are an experience. That's not interesting, but uh, despite their inexperience, why do they feel confident enough to believe in what they uh, know or don't know? All right. Internal to external. Number four, how to get the most out of a character trope to influence your narrative. The short of it. Build on the trope by adding unique traits, goals, or motivations that align with your story's themes, including their positions. Uh, for instance, a tragic hero could have a significant flaw, but is driven by an unrelenting desire to protect their community. Make sure the trope also contributes meaningfully to the story's progression. For example, the sidekick shouldn't just be comic relief, but could serve as the protagonist's conscience or guide them toward important realizations. So the long of it, if we're going to dig into that, these unique traits and motivations and goals will add much more value to a theme. Uh, you know, the tragic hero, the tragic hero, the tragic hero might have a glaring flaw, but is propelled by a burning desire to bring justice to their world, making them relatable and sympathetic despite their mistakes. You know, or you can, uh, focusing on inner conflict, develop inner conflicts that challenge your alignment with the trope. A cynical detective might have a deep-seated longing for connection that surfaces through their tough exterior, or vice versa. They have a deep-seated uh, no. They have a uh, uh, they uh, which McCoy. They have these deep connections with other people, but they're uh, they're not as tough on the exterior. All right. Also, you know, you want to significant contributions to these tropes. You want to ensure that your character's actions or development meaningfully advances the story. Because a sidekick 
could serve as the protagonist's moral compass or inspire them, which would bring what? More emotional truth, more emotional connection to the relationship. The sidekick could actually end up uh, leading their, uh, their the protagonists into the wrong circles, uh, unmistakably, that their advice is not helpful, even though it sounds like it is. Uh, but anyway, all right. So if you like uh, what you've been uh, listening, uh, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right. Now the walkthrough. Boom. Choose a familiar character trope. Boom, 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 boom. Bed and bed and boom, do, 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 do. Let's go with a sidekick. The sidekick. I love it. I love it. Boom. So uh, the sidekick is usually a loyal companion, right? So there's somebody that's like, hey, you're the protagonist. I'm here to provide uh, strength, support, right? Who's a good example of that? Chewbacca. Chewbacca is a side character, okay? Or a sidekick, I should say. Uh, Robin from Batman, okay? That's a side character, okay? Robin from Batman, if anyone knows. Uh, you got uh, you got uh, CP3, uh, C3P, C3PO and, uh, and R2-D2, okay? Uh, they are both sidekicks, but they also, uh, one of them is a sidekick to the other. Because we all know R two D two is really the brains and the right. We got Pinky in the brain. Okay, Pinky is the sidekick. However, if you believe the reality of it, is Pinky's actually the genius, uh, and the brain keeps trying to do the same thing over and over, which would mean that he's also insane. Uh, but uh, Pinky uh, f- messes up uh, the brain's uh, ability to conquer the world or to rule the world, right? To take over the world. Oh, gee, gets brain. Anyway, all right. So, you know, if we look at the sidekick, now we got to say to ourselves, how do we subvert expectations? All right. Let's see. Subvert the expectations. Uh, I know. The sidekick is the main protagonist. However, the story is told through the POV of the hero. But, oh, no, no, no. Yeah, uh, blah, 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 blah. No, no, no. The sidekick is the main protagonist, uh, allowing the narrative to be told through their POV. All right, so... Things we have to think about with this is how do we break that up? Well, you know, a lot of times we watch Batman, okay? And Batman uh, gets the help of the Robin or, you know, whoever's playing Robin, okay? But you have to think beyond that. In fact, what this allows... If we if we make the sidekick the main protagonist and the main POV, 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 we get to dive deeper into their emotional uh, positions and stances. Right, we can see the narrative through their eyes. Therefore, the story unfolds emotionally through their choices and experiences. Okay, uh, another another avenue that it gives us is um, we could explore the foundation of uh, a relationship where it is expected for the sidekick to be the sidekick, you know, a sidekick. Um, and then subvert or challenge those stereotypes. Huh? Huh? Now we're getting a little excited. That's not a real word. Now we're getting a little into it, right? And then additionally, what's another thing we could do to subvert uh, the expectations of a uh, a sidekick is um, we could actually, for the fun of it, 
the hero could end up becoming the villain and the sidekick has to take up uh, the mantle of being the hero. True hero. All right. Now, uh, if you've ever seen Sky High, all right, if I may, if I may, if you've ever seen Sky High, uh, it's alluded to that uh, the main protagonist is a sidekick. They literally have no power and like sidekick. Uh, but then it's revealed that they had always been the hero. In fact, the best friend, uh, I forget her name, but the one who can control the trees and stuff, she is already a hero, but chooses to be a sidekick because she doesn't want to have uh, the responsibility of being a hero. So that isn't technically a sidekick having to step up to become the hero. That was just somebody uh, eventually getting their powers. That was the, re the, the hero's journey, basically, yeah. So this is playing with, uh, for example, in Sky High, there's a character that could only morph into uh, a guinea pig. Uh, very cute <laughs> guinea pig. There's another one that could only be the, the, the light. And these characters step up and become the heroes because of all the heroes, uh, spoiler, becoming uh, being turned into infants. So those sidekicks actually would probably fit this. However... There's a bunch of them, so it's really a an, an ensemble. Whereas this concept would be more of just, you know, two people. The main, the main character, the, the main character being the sidekick who follows around the hero and then turning turns into the main hero. Well, the hero becomes a villain. All right, so there you go. I hope that actually helps. Um, what's next? Oh, question. Can you think of a book or movie where a familiar trope was used in a way that surprised you? How did it affect your view of that character? Eh, 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 eh. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out. <laughs> also, <laughs> final thoughts. Character tropes are not inherently bad. They are tools that can enhance your storytelling when used thoughtfully. They tap into patterns that readers find relatable and engaging. However, to avoid predictability, it's important to approach them with creativity and add layers that make each trope feel fresh and meaningful in the context of your story. This is layers, by the way. All right. Every writer has a unique perspective uh, that can be applied to familiar archetypes, resulting in some new and intriguing uh, experiences. By blending tropes, subverting expectations, or placing them in unconventional context, you can keep your audience engaged with uh, characters that feel both recognizable and distinctive. More importantly, tropes provide a foundation, but depth comes from how you layer characters with backstory, motivations, and inner conflicts. Think about how these aspects can challenge your, or uh, complement, really, those tropes, revealing hidden facets and driving characters uh, to grow a little bit through your narrative. Make sure that the characters rooted in these tropes are not static, but actively contribute to the story's development. Their evolution, relationships, and decisions should influence the plot, providing an opportunity to explore themes more deeply and reveal new narrative layers. All right. Don't be afraid to experiment with tropes. Okay. Use them as a springboard for innovative innovation rather than a set template. See how adding surprising elements unexpected backstories or contradictory motivations can lead to richer and more compelling characters. Characters are the heart of any story and developing them is an evolving process by continuing to explore different ways to play with tropes and subvert expectations. You'll find fresh opportunities to create memorable characters that resonate with readers. Next video. 
uh, in the series. Next video in the series, developing character voice from dialogue to dialect, finding the how a character speaks. I'm pretty excited about that one. I love dialogue. I'll tell you, I'm a big fan. Anyway, you want to, uh, as always, uh, you know, peace and harmony. Okay? Truth and action. Okay? And you got to keep developing the right mindset. All right. Until next time, I love you. Bye.